Good evening and welcome to another episode of Basically, It's Biblical. I am so glad that we are able to meet again at this hour, the beginning of the glorious Sabbath, which the Lord has set aside for us to spend time with him in a more fervent, diligent, and purposeful way. Let us begin with a prayer. Lord God, we welcome your Holy Spirit into our spaces, into our mind, into our homes, into our hearts, into the depths of our soul. We welcome you, Lord, and we wish that you would be with us in a powerful way. Guide us over the next, certainly the next 24 hours and throughout our lives with your Holy Spirit, with your word, with your will, and with your way. Help us to be diligent in our prayers, in our works, in our deeds, and in our expression of love to you first and to all that those that we meet and greet. This is our prayer. Amen. I want to um, sort of give a, a brief review <clears throat> of where we were when we ended uh, last week. We ended with Matthew 5, and in particular, uh, we were we had already made it to the end of Matthew 5. <clears throat> And, and the verse that was probably um, most poignant in your minds, if you, if you recall, was that the final verse in Matthew 5, verse 48, stated, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And I I did get a couple of comments that suggested that well we can't be perfect. Well I think that that's a very um, an interesting observation but I'd like to point out to you that um, there are many scriptures in the Bible which state be perfect and it helps us those scriptures will help us to understand in what ways uh, the perfection that the Bible speaks of or that Jesus was speaking of is uh, being shared and stated in. We, uh, we know logically that we, humans are, are not perfect in every sense. We certainly are not perfect in all of our doings, all of our uh, conversation, our actions, etc. But the Word of God is is mindful of that. Of course, God is mindful of that, and His Word, His commands are perfect. He wouldn't say to us, "Be perfect," if it were not possible for us to be perfect. So the scriptures that I want to <clears throat> give you, so that you can review them uh, regarding uh, our study on tomorrow uh, will be some will include some of the following Psalms 18 and 31 Psalm 19 7 and 8 Psalm 37 18 through 21 Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 14. And to kind of give you an idea of really what the expectation is, what the, what the word perfect 
is in the Hebrew and how it is to be applied to us in our behavior, we could look at two particular verses in the New Testament that sort of capsulizes or summarizes the intent of the word perfect. Remember, uh, I think maybe in the first first couple of episodes, I spoke about, uh, you know, the law, uh, studying the law, uh, talks about uh, the law, the written word of the law, uh, I'm talking about uh, like our, you know, our ordinances and our, um, uh, our civil laws, etc., the Constitution and so forth. Uh, th there, there's a literal, there's the literal word of the law, and then there is what is called the spirit of the law. So basically, it's underlying sentiment. It's um, the concept that it wishes to convey uh, to us in an overall or generalized uh, fashion. So let me give you and let us read uh, Romans 12 and verse 2. <clears throat> Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may test and approve what is the will of God, what is good and well-pleasing and perfect. Then let us Combine that with the following from 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 6, <clears throat> starting at verse 14, reads this way in the King James Version. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he goes on to list them, starting with verse 15. Which in his times he shall show, who is the blessed and the only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immorality, dwelling in the light, which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. And here are the commandments. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. If you notice here, the idea of being perfect, both in Romans 12 and 1 Timothy, is not that you are without flaws. No. But that you are constantly or, you know, mindful of your, uh, your condition, your disposition, your... Um, the way that you conduct business or handle yourself. So in Timothy, be, be not high-minded. Don't trust in uncertain riches. Give richly of all things. Do good. Be abundant, rich in good works, ready to give and distribute, 
willing to communicate. What are we supposed to be communicating? The gospel. In Romans 12, we're reminded, do not be conformed to this world. So being, and, and, and remembering that it ends up by saying what is good and well-pleasing and perfect. So the following or the preceding uh, words were, do not be conformed to this world. How do you want to be perfect? Do not be conformed to this world. Transform your mind. Renew your mind in what way? Away from the things of the world and toward the things of God. Renewing your mind so that you are not encumbered with all of the whims and uh, uh, strategies and devices and so much distraction. Renew your mind away from those things and focus on the things of God, remembering that I think it is um, in, I want to say in Galatians 5, where it specifically tells you what things to think on. Think on the things that are good, on the things that are wholesome, on the things that are true, on the things that are a good report. <clears throat> I think we went over that before. Uh, Jeremiah, <clears throat> Jeremiah 7 and 23 also, that's Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 23. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart and went backward and not forward. So here again, the notion of being perfect is, are you willing to obey his voice? Remember the scripture, my sheep know my voice. The scripture says specifically, obey my voice and I will be your God and ye shall be my people. And then in the second clause, very important, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you. That what? That it may be well with you. So there's a there's a command, but there's a blessing. Walking in the way of God, in all the ways of God, so that it may be well with you. And then gives gives us the contrast here in verse 24, Jeremiah 7, 24. But they hearken not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart. You know the scripture that, <clears throat> that says, I think we also mentioned this a couple of uh, weeks ago, um, I think it's in Ephesians, trust not. You know, lean on God, trust not in your own understanding. And and we do this so much. Uh, some prominent person uh, over a couple of years ago, when asked, do they pray or do they seek God? They said that no, they, they consult themselves. That was candidly honest. Many of us really do. We say that we walk with God. We say that we want to do the will of God. But in the end, do we seek our own counsel and our own imaginations? Instead of going specifically and ardently with what was stated? And I mean, it's, you know, again, I... I I say often that this is basically, it's biblical because basically, simply put, it is simple. All of these statements have been, have been made, they're in the scripture. If we're...